Yeah, hey, legends. A little while ago, I got three DMs asking me about a setting called Highlight Tone Priority. All the messages came within the same week, all of them from surf photographers that wanted to either use it, were unsure about it, or one that didn't know the setting was causing him so many problems. It's a reasonably underground setting in the back menus, and it's not visited by that many, but a couple of these photographers were recommended that they use it for their surf photography. Firstly, I believe this is a feature found in Canon cameras only, although some of the other brands may have a variation on this. Basically, what the setting aims to achieve is to capture more detail in the lighter areas of the pictures, so trying to correct the blown out highlights in a high contrast situation. This feature has been in some Canon cameras for more than 15 years, and I believe most of the cameras in the last decade from Canon all have it. By default, it is turned off in your camera, so this is the f if this is the first time that you've heard about it, the chances are that you haven't got it turned on, and my suggestion is to have it turned off most of the time, but we'll get into that later in the video. The way it saves blown out highlights is to effectively lower the ISO or turn down its amplification. An ISO in a digital camera is not set like the old days of film. It is more of a volume control that can be tweaked behind the scenes, so when you have the highlight tone priority activated, it effectively uses the software to use a lower ISO sensitivity. So say if you were shooting at 400, it would turn the volume down to 250, effectively underexposing to get back your highlights. And then if tone priority is activated, it will apply a tone curve to your raw file in the camera that brightens the shadow and mid-tone areas, but holds back the highlights. The problem is in certain situations, this can cause your image to have more noise and grain in the shadow areas of your raw file. Now, if you are shooting in bright sunlight with low ISOs like 200 or 400, this is not really gonna be a problem. But if the sun goes behind a cloud or the light fades as the sun starts to set, then this will cause some issues. A fellow named Pete sent in this picture and was asking why he was getting so much grain in the foreground water. His camera is the 5D Mark II, an older camera these days, but the camera that I know from experience should produce high quality and low grain in most situations. I looked at the settings and he didn't do too much wrong here. The shutter speed was good, his aperture and ISO were all good choices. But one thing I did notice that he had, he was using the highlight tone priority. Now I can understand why a surf photographer would get tempted to use something like high, highlight tone priority. We uh, shoot in super high contrast situations with bright water in most, in almost all of our photos that we take. So the chances of getting blown out highlights are very real. But we're also shooting in conditions which can change very quickly. And if you are shooting from the water, it is very difficult to go deep into the back menus to change this particular setting. So with this session, Peter was probably shooting earlier in the day when the sun was hitting that white water and it may have had a slight benefit, but it looks like the sun has either gone behind a cloud or has gotten too low to shine on the white water. Now with the highlight tone priority still on, the image was underexposed, the shadow areas which were lifted and this slight tweak gave the grain and noise in the shadow areas. Had he not had the settings enabled, he would have got less noise and less grain in the original raw file. So this is where you personally have to weigh up the risks versus rewards with the highlight tone priority. It is a setting that can you can turn on and easily forget about, and it's a setting that is difficult to switch between if you are doing water photography in the thick of the action. So personally, I don't use this setting in the water. Even on land, I tend to get correct exposure and solve the highlight problems in other ways rather than relying on this software hack. With the newer mirrorless Canon cameras that have high dynamic uh, range capabilities, I would say you are much more likely to get away with any problems when using uh, this setting than the older DSLR models. But even then, it's a slight risk. And if you forget to change it back over when the light isn't shining as brightly on the white water, then you can run into some problems. But as I always say, it's always good to experiment yourself. So... This is how you find it on your Canon camera, so you can give it a go yourself, or turn it off if you are having problems with it, with grain in your shadow areas. This is the Canon R5, and I'll show you how to find it. So to find highlight tone, tone priority, you just hit the menu button, and it's in the red menu for the Canon R5. Go across to the second one, and down to highlight tone priority, 
and select that and I've got it disabled, but you can enable at D plus and D plus two. So just an enhanced version. So that's how you turn it on and off in the menu button in the red menu, second one along highlight turn priority. I'm going to set mine to off. So now here are three photos that I've just taken outside my office window and you can see that in fact, it has retained more cloud detail with the setting turned on. So it has indeed solved a problem in a sense. But my warning comes when you forget to turn it off in a situation that there isn't bright highlights. It performs the action that is not only not necessary, but can also be damaging in some cases when there isn't strong highlight areas. So if you are purposeful and you are getting a shot that will benefit, then by all means turn it on. But after that shot or shoot, um, disable it would be my suggestion. Note that it will also increase your lowest ISO level. Most Canon cameras will go down to 100 ISO, but with this enabled, the lowest ISO that you'll be able to use is 200. So that's another factor to consider when using highlight tone priority. So to wrap it up, it's a tool that can be handy at times, but may come at a price if you're using it in situations where there are not super bright whites. So don't use it around sunset or sunrise. I hope all this makes sense. Please comment with any questions, suggestions, or experience that you've had with this setting. And please subscribe for weekly photo tips and inspiration. Thanks for tuning in today, Legends. See you soon.